mothers have come forward to allege that they were told by medical personnel that the deadly Klebicilla bacteria killed at least 38 babies at a Victoria Jubilee hospital in downtown Kingston over a two-month period in 2013. Those alleged deaths in June and July of that year have not previously been made public. However, the Victoria Jubilee, while admitting publicly for the first time that there was an infectious outbreak in 2013, is denying that so many babies died there as a result of the Clemicelia infections. On Tuesday, the Health Ministry confirmed that between June and October this year, 18 babies died at the Cornwall Regional and University Hospitals due to the two bacteria. Amka Fitzhenley has more. Senior medical personnel have been telling nationwide news that a bacteria outbreak at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital killed a number of babies in 2013. Today, a mother came forward and delivered the troubling news. The mother says in 2013, her daughter was born premature and was admitted to the hospital for approximately eight weeks. She says the nursery at the Victoria Jubilee was shut down when babies began to die suddenly. According to the mother, medical personnel told her that the shutdown was due to an outbreak of bacteria. My child was hospitalized for nearly two months. I just finished at 21. Going back and forth and hearing babies said and seeing mothers crying and I'm asking them what's wrong and they said the baby died. And other mothers complained, say, oh, I have a baby that no, you know, they need to take a stop to this. It's basically 38 40. They claimed it was the bacteria. Clevisia? My friend said, I think the party are 38, but it may be more than that. My aunt said baby died and dropped like flies. She says her premature child survived and is doing well. But the mother says nurses told her a number of babies who appeared to be doing well, only to then die suddenly, were affected by the bacteria outbreak. The woman says even babies who were transferred to a ward housing infants who were about to be sent home died suddenly. When my child was first in the nursery, her room had five babies. In four days, it had two babies, and babies were just coming in and out of that room and dying constantly. Then there was another baby that came in there that was a very huge baby that everyone expected to live. That baby caught the bacteria, and that baby died within two days. So I realized I asked if the bacteria had done it. So yes. A woman wasn't allowed to breastfeed her child with a drop of bacteria. Babies were dying. I said, this, that bacteria is life-threatening. And she said, obviously, mommy, this is why we're three and a half. And she said, if it's three and a half, what are you giving her in age of these things? And that's the point when I was told that she's already on antibiotics. The mother, who did not want her identity to be disclosed, says she made a number of friends during her over eight weeks at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. She says a number of babies belonging to her friends succumbed to the bacteria. I'm positive for 21. The rest that I heard of were the rest that I was, I wasn't there. I came back and forth from every week, as I told you, for eight weeks, I had to come to the clinic back and forth. And uh, every time I came to the clinic, I'd hear the argument. I'd have to pass the nursery door. The nursery and the labor ward door are the same. You have to pass that same security. I passed to go to the clinic to get my child leaked down to this, and I'd see people that I know that I left there when my child was discharged. I left there, and I'd ask them, how is your baby? Because I'm telling you, we all became one big family down there. And I'm going to, we're going to hear that, okay, it was the bacteria, or they don't know. The mother says she'll not forget the pain caused by the deadly bacteria outbreak at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in June and July of 2013. I witnessed so many heart-wrenching, terrible, terrible things in that nursery. I have cried most when I was at that hospital. I cried for other mothers. I cried for my child. I saw women roll on the floor. I saw a woman cesarean section cut, bust open when she heard her child was dead. She was washing her hands and everything, and I noticed the nurses were really quiet. They made her sit and they tell her that, okay, your baby passed away. And she held her stomach to the point where there was blood coming from the bandage. Ten calls placed this afternoon to Portfolio Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson were not answered. Eight calls placed to Permanent Secretary Dr. Kevin Harvey and the CEO of the Victoria Jubilee Hospital, Beulah Stevens, were not answered or returned. Abka Fitzhenley. News. Meanwhile, the mother is also accusing the health ministry of covering up the deadly 2013 bacteria outbreak at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Dennis Brooks has that story.
The mother says the health ministry lacks the capacity to manage outbreaks of deadly infections in hospitals. This bacteria at the rate is being pushed under the rug and hit you. Same like that bacteria in 2013. There's no explanation being given to parents. There's no explanation as to how. The newest thing I heard was, oh, it may be a bug. That was the first thing I heard that it may be a bug during the baby system. I heard that in 2013. There is no way or form that this mysterious bacteria can come out of nowhere and kill children. And you have no explanation as to how they got it. Obviously, you don't have a way how to treat it. I don't even think they have a way how to detect it until after the child has died. The mother says she had to break her silence following news that the same bacteria is now affecting the Cornwall Regional Hospital and the UHWI. If I told you this, I wouldn't advise anyone to go and have their kids there because it could happen anywhere. It's just that this bacteria is now at UH, at Cornwall Regional. But just to know that there is nothing being done to help this, there's nothing being done to prevent this, there's, no, there's, there's nobody shedding life on this. That is what is affecting me. It happened in 2013. There's no one on earth that can come and tell me that this is not the same thing that happened in 2013, you know. Babies died left, right, and center. It was the norm for babies to die, at least three babies per day out of that birth. It was the norm for them to die. Another mother of a child who had recovered from the klebsiel of infection spoke to our news center this afternoon. She provided us with a voice note sent to her by a woman she met at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital nursery in 2013. That voice note corroborates the story about an outbreak of a deadly infection at that facility in 2013. All in a time there, a wolf a baby the dead, you know. Every day one baby the dead out of our room, and the, the mother that said, have to, um, come, that's the head doctor, and I said, oh, the baby the mother did have so. All after when your baby get discharged, the middle of the clean out the whole of the nursery and, and move all of the baby them upstairs. Meanwhile, another mother who spoke with our news center says she too was at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in 2013, where she witnessed a number of babies dying due to what medical personnel said at the time was a bacterial infection. Mm, a lot babies were dying. I went in to have my baby. And then persons came to visit their babies, and they found out that the babies moved from downstairs to upstairs because there was an outbreak of some bacteria, some plague. They, well, their experience was bad, you know, because it, it, and I'm wondering if the disease was even upstairs, you know, because I remember when I, um, I, did, I had an, a C-section, and when it came upstairs, I know that persons were crying, even sometimes when they come to dress. So they just get called that the baby died. The mother says her child was born premature, but did not contract the bacteria. She says the child is doing well. Dennis Brooks for Nationwide News. And the senior medical officer at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital, Dr. Orville Morgan, is denying that 38 babies died during that infection outbreak at the institution in 2013. Dr. Morgan says there was an outbreak, but only six babies died. No, man, they did have an a infectious outbreak on the nursery in 2013, right? It involved uh, about 18 infants in all were affected. We lost about six babies, but all of the babies that we lost had a lot of complications besides sepsis, which would have made their situation tricky, but they think that sepsis played a role uh, and causing those losses. Dr. Morgan says he cannot say what infection affected Victoria Jubilee in 2013, but he says he's certain there weren't many fatalities. No, sir. Not at all. They have never had that. Because once we have uh, more than two infants being infected with the same bacteria, we have a system in place that they do something about that immediately. Dr. Orville Morgan, the senior medical officer at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. The Medical Association of Jamaica, the MAJ, says the latest deadly outbreak of the Klebsiella and Serratia bacteria should guide efforts to prevent a recurrence. MAJ President Dr. Merton Smith says no amount of planning will improve the public health sector if medical supplies and resources are lacking. We don't have a shortage of persons who are public health, especially people who are microbiologists and infectious disease control specialists. 
locally who could design and implement strategies to control infections in all the different public health facilities. However, if you have all these that are pointing out to a shortage of some of these things within the facilities, no matter how much planning you put in place, if what you say should be there is not there, then you will still have a problem. So what we need is financial support from the ministry in the different healthcare facilities to ensure that all the things we need are in place. Dr. Smith says the authorities must tell the public about the systemic breakdown that occurred at both the UHWI and the Cornwall Regional Hospital. I still haven't heard what the analysis has shown as to where exactly within the chain things broke down in these different facilities. I gather that the, the board of the university hospital is expecting a report today on several things, as mainly to do with the, the reporting structure, but I'm, I'm hoping that additional information would have been brought to the fore and all of that. So we certainly would need to get the facts as to where exactly within the chain things broke down, because it could have been that the, the, the persons working in the units were washing their hands religiously, but that there were some contamination of different surfaces within the units. We, we're not sure. Dr. Merton Smith, president of the MHA, speaking today with Nationwide News. You're listening to Nationwide News at 5. Morning.